Woo! Hey everyone, this is Dara from Daily Crypto Tracing. Let's come to you live, live from from Asia, guys. A great time to be live, and we're going to be talking about Gary Gensler, Elon Musk. Wow, Congress is ripping Gary a hole, a huge butthole, because looks like Congress has had enough, had a freak enough of Gary and his control obsession with destroying crypto and basically moving a lot of crypto innovation offshore. So I think, you know, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be showing you what happened at a congressional hearing where Gary gets slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, out of there. And uh, he got threatened with a subpoena, guys, because it looks like Congress has been asking asking for info uh, from Gary. And it's taken freaking seven months and still nothing. So basically, some of the you know, top Congress people out there who are big supporters of uh, crypto and crypto projects uh, are had enough. And they said, Gary, Gary, you're going to get a subpoena. You're going to get fired. You're out of there. And also, too, we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, Gary was put under the hot seat. And he said, and Congress said, is Bitcoin a commodity or security? Answer it, weasel. Answer it, weasel face, Gary. And Gary, he was like, blah, 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 blah. so finally, uh, Gary did come out and say, it's a commodity. So, you know, like this weasel, this a-hole snowflake, he's soon going to get fired. So we're going to dive into that. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, and basically, we're going to be focused on Gary and how Gary got roasted, how Gary got slammed down, and he's out of there. I'm so excited. This, And he's been one of the biggest weasel dick beep heads out there uh you know and fr from my perspective i mean look remember and all this is financial advice in case you're wondering what's going on but you know i'm not a comp conspiracy person kind of nut you know i mean okay there's aliens i accept that i know that the, you know like go figure but i swear gary is working for the big banks and he wants to keep crypto innovation and crypto down because the banks are running scared because i'm getting excited they're running scared because they know that crypto is going to go to basically devastate banking, right? You know, so let's jump into it. I digress. I digress. Uh, remember, smash the likes, subscribe, share this freaking video, guys. Great time to be live. You're the OG. The OG in the house. Uh, remember, go back and watch all my other videos. I would appreciate it uh, out there, guys. So let's take a look what's going on with the broader markets. Let me give this a mid refresh. And don't forget, Dogecoin 111. Pow, pow. So we are seeing right now that the U.S. markets yesterday were up slightly. The Dow Jones was down. Uh, big news. It looks like uh, it looks like U.S. Uh, the Treasury yield reaches a level not seen in more than ten years, guys. So, wow, things are things are just heating up, but nothing really is happening except uh, Gary Gensler get roasted, guys. So, uh, looks like new in SEC officials acknowledge 1.5 trillion. A manager, uh, Franklin Templeton, had just filed for a spot uh, ETF. Speaking about spot ETFs, also out there, Gary, Gary the Snowflake, uh, he's delaying, he's delaying. Gary sucks. Uh, SEC delays another spot ETF decision. So he's just delaying everything. And there's no reason. He's just putting it off. You know, Bloomberg came out and said, look, there's a 75% chance that we're going to get an ETF in 2023. Well, basically with Gary's, Gary's, you know, craziness out there, this could be delayed, guys. This could be delayed out there. Uh, and he's just pushing up the deadlines without any reason, you know. So I don't know what his what his freaking problem is, but we're going to see how Gary gets gets completely busted out there. So you guys can see here, uh, you know, these are the top uh, managers, asset managers that have applied for spot ETFs. And we're seeing BlackRock is $10 trillion, Fidelity $4.5 trillion. Invest Q at 1.5. Franklin Templeton just came out today. 1.5. Wisdom Tree. Wisdom Tree. Uh, uh, 875 billion. Van Eck. Uh, Global X. Arkell. So we're talking in terms of uh, assets under management, we're talking about 17.7 .7 trillion. Now, remember, you know, Bitcoin, crypto is repeating all these patents. But remember, all these patents that have been repeated in the past or happened historically did not include. That's 17.7 .7 trillion uh, worth of assets under management. So if the spot ETF, uh, all these spot ETFs come out, and Gary don't want that because, you know, if we have 17 trillion 
uh, dollars worth of asset management, and a large uh, chunk of that is uh, in the Bitcoin. This is gonna, this is gonna de de devastate the banks, and he's protecting the man. And once all these ETFs come out, we're gonna be seeing that um, you know Bitcoin could go like a million bucks, guys. I mean, the forecast without the ETFs is going to be like two hundred thousand, right, in two thousand twenty-five around Sept uh, August, September ish. So you know, in two thousand twenty-five around about this freaking time, we're going to be seeing 200,000 Bitcoin. So a lot of people, uh, you know, I had some friends that came to me and they said, you know, I had some friends came to me. Oh, oh, gee, I see the price going down. Should I sell? Should I sell all my Bitcoin right now? And I, I, I'm i not giving financial advice. I'm just talking to my friends. I said, no, are you, are you stupid? Are you, you got the, you got the, like, uh, like monkeys, monkey brain or what? No, don't sell. This is not the time to sell. This is time to accumulate, guys. You like my shirt? Hey, uh, Bitcoin. This is the same shirt that Elon Musk has. Oh, yeah, I'm an Elon Musk fanboy. Beat me up in the comments. Beat me up in the comments. Uh, and I said, no, you don't want to sell now. What? This is a time when you want to be accumulating, bro. Uh, bro, uh, you know, we could be expecting at least 200,000 uh, September, August, September 2025. So this is not the time. And like, seriously, they're about to pull the trigger and sell all their crypto. Because they don't have patience. Uh, looks like just come in. Looks more Gary. We're like this is Gary, Gary, Gary. Uh, Justin, the SEC has decided to postpone its decision on the uh, proposed ARC 21 shares Bitcoin ETF until next year, setting a new deadline for January 10th. This move suggests delays on other spot BTF decisions are going to happen. But I believe, I believe that uh, Gary's going to get fired before that. Uh, I think Congress is going to fire him. And the reason for the delay is there's no reason. He's just, he just protecting his friends, protecting the banks. He protecting, uh, but he's out of there. The the you know, and it looks like we had a group of uh, bipartisan lawmakers send a letter to uh, Gensler, pleading with him to approve the spot idea. Okay, so this letter came out from the Congress. It was the Oversight Committee, right? The Securities and Exchange Commission. And they basically said, you know, we want you to we want you to approve this crap, and reminded Gary that in fact uh, he's working for the people because Gary seems to have a lapse of memory and forget that crap, you know. And like I said, some people are still saying, oh, Bitcoin's going to go down to 12k. It ain't freaking happening, guys. You know, these are these are the this is this is inevitable. And here's why Bitcoin is not going to go down to 12K. This is from Mags, by the way. I love Mags. We have 94,000 Bitcoins worth about 2.6 billion that are lost forever. These are guys that threw the hard drives in the dumpster. I mean, I did talk about it. There's one guy in the UK. He's been like well, rummaging around this dumpster for, I think, like 10 years. I think he's got a ton of Bitcoin. You're out of there. Forget about it. Uh, that's why you need to have a hardware wallet. Ladies and gentlemen, and have your keys locked in your memory or something, you know. Uh, rumors of BlackRock's uh, secretly buying 12,200 Bitcoins, okay? And also institutions have filed for Bitcoin ETF 17.7 trillion. We just talked about that. So there's no freaking way that Bitcoin is going to go down to uh, to 12K. Also, Bitcoin market cap is only three, $530 billion versus gold's two, 13 trillion. Only 6.3% of all total Bitcoin supply left on exchanges. So most of the Bitcoin is off exchanges and in private hands. We are 200 days in the next halving. And Bitcoin supply shock is coming, guys. So hopefully that's shock it, shock it, shock it. Let's take a look at what's going on with the crypto. So today is a better day. We're seeing a little bit of a bump up, a lift off. Of most of the cryptocurrencies out there. So that is pretty good. Uh, fear and greed wise, uh, crypt this is Bitcoin sentiment. It's still a 46 unchanged. Yesterday was 44. So we're still, people are starting to get fearful. Uh, but this is a good signal. This is the time you guys should be buying. Buying a freaking dips, guys. So listen to this, guys. This is Gary. This is a Gary who says Bitcoin is not a security, but refuses to say it's a commodity. Okay? Like, like come on, Gary. What the freak? Okay, listen to this. Matt, your view on Bitcoin, you've, you've made comments on this. You believe Bitcoin is, is not a security. Is that true? Well, I think the staff, the SEC, have also uh, ended prior. Well, I'm here. just asking you this question. You want to not a gotcha? I thought there's going to be an easy softball into harder questions. You think Bitcoin is a security? Yep. 
I think I've said this in the past that I think that it's- I'm asking you to you know, answer my question well, now. All. This is not supposed to be hard. I know, I said it, it does not meet the Howey test, which is the okay. all the land about being- So best. it doesn't meet the Howey test. Right. So therefore it's a commodity. Is that fair? I, I, I would say it's not a security and then the test is otherwise for other uh, right. laws. Matter if you want. You see, look at Gary. If you want to answer the freaking question, why? Because he's protecting the man. He's protecting the bank. Guys, listen to this. Uh, U.S. Congress says SEC chair refuses to be transparent about interactions with FTX, Sam Bankman Fried, and warns of subpoena. So this would be the first time in history that a uh, SEC chair gets a, could get a subpoena. Listen, listen, listen. He gets roasted. You refuse to be transparent with Congress regarding your interactions with FTX and Sam Bankman Fried. That's the investigation we started last Congress. Finally, your lack of responsiveness to this committee's legitimate oversight continues to be unacceptable. And I want to finish here. In February, the committee made multiple requests yep. for documents to the Securities Exchange Commission. This is normal congressional oversight. Yep. Yet seven months later, the committee has not received a single non-public document I told you. that was not part of a FOIA production. As I said, our patience is wearing thin. Man. The SEC is not above the law nor is it unique. Other financial regulators have routinely complied with congressional oversight. Gary, well, let me be clear. I do not want to be the first chairman of this committee to issue a subpoena to the Securities Exchange Commission. It's going to happen. And you should not want to be the first SEC chair to receive a congressional subpoena. Either we find a path forward where the SEC recognizes Congress as a co branch of government and is responsive to our oversight duties, or my option is to issue a subpoena. Get it. It's time for you to consider the lasting consequences of your actions. Oh, yeah. Uh, your actions and what that means to the Securities Exchange Commission's reputation long term. While your time in this role may be temporary. Okay, so Gary's getting roasted, and it goes on. Exactly the public it is goes on. spending service. Exactly. That yes on the efforts of others. It goes on. Is the answer to that yes? yes. U.S. Congress has yeah, slammed. I'm prejudging anyone. Slam. Do you think that for attacking crypto, reclaiming my tenure, I'll, I'll take it as a yes. Yeah. And to be clear, sir, this perspective has nothing to do with the concern you noted in the speech last year, where you said, quote, over the past year, several bank executives have shared their concerns with me about the sheer number of depositors who have moved money from their bank accounts into crypto-related oh. exchanges and wallets. Yeah, and protecting banks. Right? The concern that those bank executives raised Gross that there's, again, I, I reclaim my eyes were again out no. heard. I've asked you to answer the questions as short as I can so I can use the time I have. And it's clear that you would like to avoid answering exactly. questions in my Gary the Weasel. An Obama appointed judge in the Southern District of New York, a bank friendly jurisdiction where you bring most of your cases, recently found that decentralized financial technology, quote, not only removes the so called middlemen from these transactions but it also allows users to interact through a variety of methods in an easy and efficient manner, yeah. end quote. The court also said underwriters like the ones at banks where you work, sir, are, quote, precisely, precisely the types of individual roles that decentralized exchanges were designed to eliminate, end quote. Yeah, Mr. Gensler, can you assure this committee that your style of regulation by harassment towards digital asset yeah. innovation yeah, is to the benefit of every American and not driven by your desires to protect industry incumbents? This is a field that's rife with fraud and manipulation, and I'm, I'm looking out for the American investors who've been hurt by the Weasel. crypto. Weasel. I'll, I'll reclaim my time. Yeah. Mr. Gensler, despite your years of rhetoric, like today, I'm convinced you are not an impartial regulator. Instead, it's clear that you are working to consolidate your own power, even though it means crushing opportunities yeah. for everyday Americans and, frankly, yeah. the financial future of this country. Gary, Even Weasel. the federal courts are highlighting the damage you, sir, are doing to our constituents, and they're telling you that you don't have the legal Go, authority to accomplish your goal of squashing competition in the financial market. Well, brother. Congress has been telling you that, too. Yeah. Now, Mr. Gensler, I believe our great financial system is the definition of freedom in this country. Exactly. And congressional policies must provide room for the traditional financial system to evolve alongside the disruptive digital asset ecosystem. That said, it cannot be understated that a common theme throughout your career, sir, yep. is your relentless loyalty to the largest financial institutions at the clear expense of innovation, competition, I didn't everyday say that. Americans. 
And Mr. You Hammer know, said, I said, I'll bet some large, large financial institutions would really not agree with that. There's no question now, sir. I've yielded. Yeah. Gary. So, uh, Here's another example. You know, Gary just got slam dunked today. Thank God. God bless everybody. Here's Mr. Davidson as well. Uh, listen to what happened. He has this hole in the authority of. Hitler. Listen, also another guy got. Pushing a, a woke political ad, and social agenda, and I think abusing your role in the Davidson. authority of the SEC. He's saying fire uh, as cover. So, uh, you know, I think fundamentally uh, the SEC Stabil Stabilization Act would remove the role of chairman. Yeah. Uh, it would preserve uh, the current commissioners. We would add a, a, a sixth commissioner. They so there would be. Uh, no more than three from any one political party. And so that would provide a path that would make the SEC do what you're avoiding. Frankly, you're front-running Congress, you're front-running the courts, you're front-running even the own administration, and no one has held you to account for that. Yeah. I mean, I wish the Biden administration would say you're fired, uh, but they're the list of folks they need to do that for is long. Congress hopefully will with the SEC stabilization. There you go, Gary. It, it's just a shit job. But anyways, here we go. Have you ever wondered why and how Bitcoin is achieving to run in a four-year cycle and structure why? People always think this is a time will be different. But in the end, it's the same. If we take a look at 2014 to 2018, it's the same. 2017 to 2000, it's the same. And right now, we are looking at a huge, huge similarity. And we're going up. We're going to hit 200,000 in uh, 25. Uh, it's, a, it's just a matter of time, guys. We're going to get there. You're going to get there. And the cycles are repeat. You know, uh, basically the conditions are pretty simple. We have all-time high. We have correction, bear market rally, bear market, bear, bear market bottom, uptrend consolidation, all-time high. And right now, we are at the uptrend and consolidation phase right now. We're right here, guys. So, you know, if if you have any doubt, zoom out. Wendy Trendy is your friendy. That's all I, that's all I got to say. Uh, DXY is going up like crazy, not helping at all. Uh, overall, the crypto markets are up a little bit today. Nothing much. It's kind of just, it, everything's just going sideways. It's flat. But less volatility is good. We're seeing Bitcoin is at 26351 We're seeing Ethereum is just shy of 1600 bucks. BNB is down today. XRP is down, but still holding at 50 cents. Don't sleep on don't sleep on XRP. We're seeing Cardano has flipped. Uh, Doji Woozier. And it's down about to 0 0.17. And the Doge is still holding, clinging to life at six cents, guys. That's what's going on. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, it's trying to break out of this downward trend. I said that if we don't break out this trend line, uh, if we don't break above this trend line, then we could be pushed down to 25.2. Uh, but it looks like, uh, you know, we are attempting to break out of that. If you take a look at the EMA ribbons right now, we're seeing that uh, Bitcoin is starting to move up uh, in the EMA ribbon bands. And if we can break out above the EMA ribbons, that would be very bullish. Uh, for Ethereum, though, Ethereum is a little bit different. It's kind of going sideways, which is good. Uh, it is also starting to trend up, which is pretty good as well. And if this continues, we should see that uh, Ethereum should travel up in this point, hit the 1661, and then that will be decision time, either break up or break down. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if it gets up to that level, there's a good probability we could continue going up overall so i'm pretty happy about it uh once again one of the most pivotal moments in the uh, bitcoin cycle is the halving guys uh, i remember every time we have halvings this is what's happened uh first halving bitcoin went up 468 percent second 209 third halving 107 173 percent and uh having to top rally in the first half was a seven a nine a three nine percent second was that and third half is 650 percent guys so it's looking pretty good uh, from my perspective. I think we could be seeing easily, easily uh, 278%, 150, 200K having, uh, uh, coming just after the next having, guys. So, and I think Gary is going to be out of there. Gary will be out of there. Guys, don't forget, uh, we got free shipping on uh, Nano Ledgers, guys. So get your hardware wallet, secure your crypto. If you don't own the keys, you don't own the crypto, guys. Don't forget that. Remember that. Uh, what's going on for douche? We need Elon Musk to accept the Jewish coin to buy Tesla. We need to do that now. Do you agree? Comment. Fear and greed, guys. Let's take a look at the fear and greed uh, right now for Doge. Uh, seriously, are you afraid that Doge will go lower or do you see this as a huge opportunity to buy more? I mean, this is kind of like really the half, 
half cup, full half cup, empty scenario. I think it goes down more. I'm buying more. I still believe in the Doge. You should be believing in the Doge too, guys. I love it. You should love it, guys. It's a great time to be alive. Guys, so let's talk about Doge, Dogecoin price right now. So we're seeing that right now, Doge is just holding strong at uh, six cents. Nothing really much happening. Market cap is really unchanged. The volumes are light. It seems like everyone is just taking a break, taking taking a sideways glance, a sideways look at Doge. And Doge is still holding strong. It's going sideways at six cents. It's a critical level. We need a Dogecoin to hold that, guys. It's so, so important. Uh, let's take a quick look at Shiba Weeby. Let's get out of here. Uh, same pretty, pretty much same uh, for Shiba Inu going sideways. Nothing much to report, guys. I appreciate all of you. Love all of you guys. Uh, do not forget, go back and watch all my other videos. I would appreciate it. Uh, it's a great time to be live. Definitely a great time to be alive out there, guys. Uh, don't forget to follow me. Follow, follow, follow. And uh, let's even get this up to 10,000 followers. I appreciate it. Guys, don't forget to get the merch. Be the merch. And I will see you in a freaking next one. Peace out. Thank you.